My name's Wendy Weller. I'm a community matron for Home First. My name's Gillian Austin and I'm the clinical lead physiotherapist for pulmonary rehab in Eastern North Hertfordshire. I'm Jackie Mason. I'm one of the occupational therapy leads within Home First. My name's Dr Fiona Sinclair and I'm one of Maxine and John's GPs. My name's Sharon Lord, I'm the Senior Practitioner for the Home First team. I am Amanda Pollinger, I work for Ace Community Care. I'm Sarah Wilmot, I'm an Emergency Care Practitioner with the Home First team. My name's John Duke, I'm 73 years old, retired of course. And I live here in Holwell with my partner, Maxine. I'm Maxine Green and I live in Hitchin. And three and a half years ago, I was diagnosed with MS, um, being a carer, a 24-7 job. Um, it's very difficult to go from being lovers to carer and care receiver. Um, it's quite a hard thing to do really. Um, it changes the relationship a lot. Um, we are very close and I have to give a lot of physical care to John now that I wouldn't have done before, which has become easier. Um, I think it was quite hard for John to start with. Hi Max, John, it's Wendy. The service and care that I provide for John and Max is, as a community matron for Home First, I am in charge of a virtual ward and Max and John are uh, patients on that virtual ward, which means that the care that is delivered to them is by a case manager who does proactive care, but also John and Max are under my radar as well for if they have what we call, a, they become rapid and we have to do a rapid response if John's condition deteriorates quickly or if Max is unwell and we've got to change the care that is delivered to John and Max. Have you had a drink this morning? I've had drinks. Good. My name is Sharon Lord, I'm the Senior Practitioner for the Home First team. I'm employed by Hertfordshire Council uh, to work as part of an integrated team with health and social care working together. As we are all based in the same office, communication is much easier. It's done through the forms of uh, multidisciplinary team meetings, which is a good time for us to share our experiences with particular service users or issues that may have come up. Um, it's a good chance for us also to bounce off each other in regards to ways forward, suggestions, actions that could be taken. Um, in regards for the benefit for the service user, it means that they don't have to keep repeating the same stories over and over again. They can say it to their physiotherapist or whoever may be in and be assured that that information will be brought back and shared within the team, obviously with their consent. The integrated team, we all communicate mainly by face-to-face. Um, we're now, a lot of us are all set up in one building initially to perhaps start the day, we come back at lunchtime. So a lot of it, for example, with with the patient in the case of John, um, the community matron would refer on to myself. She'd do that by face to face, but gives us in written information as well. And we share the same computer system. So lots of that information is on the computer system. Um, we liaise very closely with the district nurses, the community nurses. And, and in with John's case, I then referred on to the hospice, local hospice, um, for some support if he needed more psychological support at a higher level than perhaps my role could offer. Um, and also for day hospice. And John also uses that facility for some respite at times if that's what's needed. The benefits of this way of working are to provide a responsive um, healthcare for John, um, meeting his, hopefully, his and Max's needs. So, for example, if John becomes ill and unwell, we can increase the health professional visits to John, um, working you know, with the whole team. Um, and Mir sort of mirroring that with social services as well so he could have his care package increased at that time. <coughs> In doing so we can support Max as the caregiver so that she can cope with looking after John at home and also fulfil John's wishes which is to be nursed at home. I was mortified to think that I had to have 
external help coming in to care for me. I've been a nurse and managed a day service for adults with profound disability for the last 20 years of my working life. So I felt I could and I should be doing all the care myself. But Wendy picked up that I was sort of failing in my health. I was starting to relapse due to the stress and the pressure and the physical demands of caring for John. I have two carers, both from ACE Caring Agency and Maxine, of course, she fills in as well. The service we provide is for, for both of them as a couple, though predominantly for John, here for John. Um, we do personal care in the mornings, assist him to get up and dress and anything else he requires. Um, Maxine deals with medication. Um, we assist Maxine with any little tasks that she might need, um, picking up prescriptions, a little bit of shopping here and there, or anything that she may need in between visits. We were reassured that it would only be a very limited number of carers that will be dealing with John and supporting me, because they do really support me as well. It was set up with Ace Community Care, um, who's a small organisation, but they're very local, um, particularly our main carer, who actually lives in the road, um, so she can be very responsive in times of need, and I have picked up the phone and said, help, and she's like, here in five minutes, which is brilliant. Uh, for instance, uh, the other day in between my visits, the doctor came to see John and suggested he eat more bananas to push his potassium levels up. So I picked up a few bananas and brought them back on my next visit. So for people like Maxine and John, um, anyone who's got complex ongoing health needs, um, usually they'll need to have help and support from a variety of sources. Um, because obviously we're very lucky in that we've got the Home First team coming into place and that means that the, the team, the Home First team, the community team can provide those skills from within that team to help meet the patient's needs in a way that's flexible, um, more or more complex when it's needed, less when it's not and always aiming to try and help people to be as independent as possible. We're at the stage now where unfortunately John has had to sleep downstairs because his mobility has deteriorated to the extent that he can no longer manage the stairs. Um, so for the last few months he's been sleeping downstairs in their dining room um, and Maxine is, is sleeping upstairs and we did look at the possibility of a stair lift but also thinking of the, the future, um, Maxine herself also has days where she has to use a wheelchair that we're thinking the best option would be that for them to have a lift that goes through the floor from the dining room upstairs into one of the upstairs bedrooms. Um, we've been working with the OTs in the Home First team to look at providing um, a way of John being upstairs, coming upstairs now, um, hopefully with a lift through the floor because um, ultimately we want him to be able to come back upstairs so we can go to bed like we always have done in the same bed together. I get on well with all the carers. If I need a doctor or if I need a nurse, we've got plenty within the, the group. I've only got to ring one up. I prefer to be treated at home because I don't get put anywhere, sent anywhere. The final decision is always mine.